Are they safer than smoking? Probably. But are they totally harmless? Science is leaning towards a big nope. It stands to reason that these are probably, puff for puff, less dangerous than regular cigarettes. That's not the same as saying that they are safe. Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts, the series where we reveal, of course, five random facts about a fascinating topic. In today's installment, we're looking at e-cigarettes or vaporizers. It delivers the same amount of nicotine, but the smoke is water vapor. Yeah, water. LED light. We could easily fill the episode with studies on their effects to your health or their supposed efficacy in helping you quit smoking, but that debate's been done and is still being done. Instead, we're mostly focusing on non-health-related facts. You're awfully good with that. <laughs> Number five, vaporizers have been a long time coming. Most people think of e-cigarettes as a 21st century technology. True, the modern e-cigarette was created in 2003 by a Chinese chemist, but the first smokeless non-tobacco cigarette was invented by one Herbert A. Gilbert, who received a patent for it in 1965. A few prototypes were made, but it was never successfully marketed, and the technology languished for nearly 40 years. Experts agree that the basic design of modern e-cigs is essentially the same as in Gilbert's patent. So he must be rolling in dough now, right? Nope. His patent expired decades ago, so no one owes him a dime. I invented a product half a century ago that nobody wanted, and those that could have done something with it, sat on their hands and waited for my patent to expire, and then they filed theirs. Number four, ice dancing is to skates as cloud chasing is to vaporizers. Our Mr. Roboto to start the routine. Uh, and they hit it beautifully. If you're one of those people who like to endlessly accessorize and mod their toys, and then post videos of yourself playing with them, then you just might be into vaporizers. Is it good for you, Stockholm? Because it was good for me. Let's have a smoke. Cloud chasing is now a competitive sport and a fairly popular hashtag on Twitter, Instagram, and Vine. Cloud chasers trick out their vaporizers with custom mods, decks, and drippers. The vapor clouds they produce are kind of cool, though the jargon is a bit intense. 510 threading's buttery smooth. So it's usually on a 20 gauge five wrap with roll wires. Five wrap, 22 gauge. Uh, Santa Post sleeper build. The VG is where you're going to get your plumes. Number three, nicotine poisonings are on the rise. So you just died of nicotine poisoning. Sucks to be you. The good news is it happened pretty fast. In the US, the Center for Disease Control reported in August 2014 that calls to poison control centers involving e-cigarette liquids containing nicotine raised from one per month in 2010 to 215 per month in 2014. Nicotine overdoses can cause nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. And if the mass exodus of bodily fluids didn't alarm you enough to seek medical attention, the heart palpitations, difficulty breathing, and your newly acquired lisp might also do the trick. Half of those incidents involve children under the age of five. Doctors say that depending on the concentration of the e-liquid used, ingesting just half a teaspoon could be enough to kill a child. Making matters worse is that liquid nicotine solutions can actually be absorbed through the skin, are often given candy flavors, and are often not required to be sold in childproof containers. Don't forget, tobacco is a loaded pistol, and time pulls the trigger. Number two, the kids are vaping out. The legal status of e-cigs varies from country to country and state to state. In the US, where sale to minors is still permitted in many states, Studies show that teens actually use e-cigarettes more than tobacco cigarettes, and that the trend is growing. In fact, the Center for Disease Control says teens now use vaporizers three times more than they did in 2012. Aside from the fact that many states permit their sale to minors, the rise in teen vaping might have to do with the way they are marketed. What kind do you smoke? Strawberry or mango, usually. E-liquids are sold in flavors that clearly appeal to young people. Flavors like these, as well as others like Crazy Berry, Sweet and Sour Kiss, Twisted Grape, and something called Zombie Blood. Number one, the tobacco industry is all up in there. For now, there's no one overseeing these companies, so they can essentially just do whatever they want on air. The global e-cigarette industry makes an estimated $3 billion in sales annually, while the tobacco industry sells about 250 times more than that. But Big Tobacco still recognizes the value of being in that smaller market. Nearly all of the world's major tobacco companies also have brands of e-cigarettes, 
and in the US, their sales account for 74% of the market. The industry wants to position them as a safe alternative to smoking because they see it as the growth platform of the future. We have spent decades trying to get rid of advertising on TV that makes smoking look glamorous. They're undoing exactly what the goal of the ban on cigarette advertising was intended for. They're advertised on TV and often sold to minors, but the science currently available just doesn't prove that they're totally safe. Big tobacco has avoided scrutiny and that's a concern. I don't trust them at all. Nobody trusts them. Nobody should trust them. So what do you think, Cloud Chaser? Should everyone butt out and vape up? For more hot air top 10s and safer alternative top 5s, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You're cheating. No, I'm not. It's vapor. Still. You should try it. Addiction without the consequences.